Hello and welcome to another of our Dental Business Transaction Podcasts. And today I have huge pleasure in introducing Kunal Thacker, who is the CEO and founder of Tooth Club. Kunal, welcome. Hi, Lily. Kunal is going to talk to us. Obviously, he has a proven success rate of innovating and operating dental practices throughout the UK. And we're going to touch on how he started the Tooth Club, how he developed his brand and the learnings along the way, and also um, how to give buyers confidence in buying a fully private dental practice. So before we get into the nitty grit, let's talk about a little bit about yourself, Kunal, um, for everybody. Talk about your background, yourself, and, and what drives you. Oh, thanks, Lily. Uh, great to be here on this podcast. So uh, I guess by, by way of background, my background is actually finance and not dentistry. So I um, spent the best part of my career at investment banks, Goldman Sachs and then HSBC. And whilst doing that, I always knew I wanted to do more. Uh, the finance world was very intangible. You know, it wasn't making a difference on real people. Um, and I wanted my own business. And I always knew I wanted my own business because my parents always had their own business. So it was almost in the blood. And um, I had a friend who was a dentist who said, I know nothing about business, but I want to buy a dental practice. So we joined up to a few of the agencies and actually, Lily, it was you that sold me my first um, first practice, which was um, in Basildon and it was under the name of Tooth Doctor. Um, and we had, oh, we had three practices um, uh, under the brand of Tooth Doctor, but I still had to keep my day job um, and our clinical director at the time got pregnant and uh, she's like, I'm going off on maternity leave and... Uh, uh, in the end, I ended up picking up the dental practices and kind of growing, growing the, um, the, the, the small group that we had there, uh, three practices. Um, and uh, having not being a dentist myself, it was a huge challenge to kind of learn, learn everything. But it was a great amount of fun. You know, it was making a difference to real people, um, you know, putting smiles on real people. Um, and we were we were always private. You know, we did uh, uh, right now we're, we're largely private uh, with a small bit of NHS, but private tends to be where our brand, our group is kind of focused on. So uh, we spent five years growing Tooth Doctor and we sold that in 2019. Um, and the only reason we sold it, it was a hugely profitable business, but the only reason we actually sold it was so we could go on and set, set up a, a new group that would be bigger and do it on a larger scale. Lovely. So um, obviously I know how busy you are, but what about hobbies and interests? I mean, you know, it's always an interesting one to ask my guests, what do you do to relax? What's your idea of wind down time, de-stressing, but any hobbies? Uh, I don't know if it's, it's, it's wind down or hobbies, but uh, I've got, uh, so I'm married and I've got three kids um, who are Aria, Sienna and Hugo, uh, seven, five and three. So they keep me very busy and keep me on my toes for sure. Um, so, uh, yes, I think a lot of time, uh, probably like most parents goes, is any spare time I have, it's really trying to dedicate to the kids, spend some time with them. And, and you know, my parents, you know, I talked about my parents a little bit about they, you know, they had their own business and we spent most of my childhood seeing my parents work really hard. Um, and for me, I want to work really hard, but I really want to make sure that I have quality time with my children whilst they're growing up because uh, they're, they're growing up very fast. So, you know, I don't, uh, you know, in a few years, they won't want to know me. So whilst I've got them and I can still get cuddles, um, I'm making the most of that time. Oh, it's lovely. And, you know, it's so important to make that time and it's so easy. But I remember when my children were young that all you want to do is get a lie in in the morning. And, and it's that <laughs> long, milestone moment when you can actually have a lie in and you don't have to get up and tend to them at six or seven in the morning. You shouldn't wish their life away, but it, it's, it's just, I never forget that moment of being able to. Do you know, Lily, I. I have friends that complain about their TJ, teenage kids that won't get out of bed. And I'm like, do you know, I can't wait till the day that I have that problem. Because uh, even on a Saturday, it's probably like quarter to six. And, we're, and you know, our house is up doing breakfast. And uh, yes, it's, uh, desperate, desperate. It, it, it's, it's, it's challenging. I know, but it's all lovely. And it goes so quickly. Now, I want to talk to a bit. I, I don't actually, I'm not a fan of the word journey. But talk about the vision that you had when you started with the new business, especially. Um, what vision did you have and what are your goals? What are you looking to achieve, perhaps, your next 10-year plan? Yeah, uh, when, when we set up Tooth Club, uh, which is our new, uh, our new brand, our new business, uh, you know, we had, we had a lot of time to think about what we wanted to do and how we wanted to be different. Um, and uh, the, the whole thing with dentistry, and, and I kind of did it unconsciously at Tooth Doctor, but the whole focus with, with Tooth Club is about 
patients with dental anxiety. No one likes going to the dentist, let's be honest, right, yeah? People have uh, the association that you go to the dentist, you, know, you ring up and you've got a bulldog sitting behind reception uh, who's very cold and, you know, if you're lucky, you'll get an appointment. Uh, you know, you walk into the surgery and all you can smell is the disinfectant and that horrible clinical smell. Everything looks really blue and, and you know, and, and from the 1960s. And, you know, I remember all of these things come back to when I was going to the dentist as a child and I hated it. And I still have anxiety to, to this day when I sit in a dental chair and I own seven practices. Um, but, you know, so my whole vision with, with Tooth Club was to change that. So you walk into one of our clinics, you know, they look aesthetically look amazing. Uh, you know, I don't want you to feel like you're in a dentist. I want you to feel like, you know, you're going in to have, uh, you know, you're spending money to have a nice pleasurable treatment as much as it can be and you know what we've done to kind of give that good quality patient journey is you walk in you'll have a lovely receptionist behind the desk who's well trained can talk about treatments but can also make conversation and make people feel relaxed if they're having a root canal treatment or an invasive treatment uh, so uh, you know our front of house is really important we have really nice smells as you walk in the music is nice nice cups of teas for for our patients so that whole patient journey is really really nice you then walk into one of our surgeries and you're going to be given a five-star treatment you know our clinicians are really really well well trained the team as well the nurses um, our treatment coordinators are all trained to make sure we give patients a really nice service and and you know we don't compromise on that you know we don't always get it right but we're constantly striving to make sure that we achieve that 100% of the time. So patients sit down, they're going to have a root canal. You can choose your favourite Netflix show whilst you're having your root canal treatment. And we use the best technology out there. So even some of the most invasive treatments, you know, should be, I won't say pain-free, but less pain um, for sure. And just a nicer experience with great follow-up care for our patients. And that really is the focus of everything we do. It is patient care. You know, they're, they're such simple core values, but if you get it right... It works, and you have to stick to it, and people will tell their friends. Um, and, of course, people have a bad experience in the dentist, and, and their perception is reality, whether you agree with it or not. But um, it sounds really lovely. I have to say, I, I almost wish I had a tooth problem to come and see you about, but I'm glad I don't. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> I'll take your word you know, for it. One thing, and one thing I would say is, is we can't achieve it without the team it's the people in our teams that make it happen because I can sit here and say all these great things I'm not the one that's at front of house you know dealing with that anxious patient or kind of making them a cup of tea and it's actually we've got a really really good quality strong team in all of our practices and even the new ones that we're onboarding you know it is a you know it's a 12-week journey to getting them on board but it's exactly the same thing we want to achieve there and we can only do it with our people and we've got a fantastic team that work tirelessly for our patients and genuinely care about our patients. That is so important, isn't it? And if everyone's not rowing in the same direction, I talk about this on various other blogs and we talk to our team about it. And I'm like you, we're very fortunate, we're very blessed. We, we are really a tight team and we do all row in the right direction and support each other. And you cannot have someone just peeling off rogue with a different attitude and a different mindset that just tuts and huffs because the effect on the team morale is enormous. And what isn't important to them is very important to everybody else. So um, that's very good, isn't it? Um, and obviously, with, the, with your team, do you have to find that you have to consistently just keep talking to them about the services you expect, or are they all very much on board and they understand this is the company culture? Yeah. And look, I, I wouldn't say Tooth Club is, isn't without its challenges. Absolutely. We have challenges uh, that, that everyone else faces in the dental space at the moment. But I would say, you know, our, our core focus has been to embed good culture and values within the business. Uh, you know, our tagline is work hard make a difference and have fun. Uh, and, I, and I swear by that because, you know, you have to work hard, right? That's what we're here for. We're, we're here for our patients. Um, but equally, you know, have fun because, you know, that, that also resonates on, 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 our, on our patients. And what we do is, is, is two things, I think, is, is kind of part of our strategy. So the first thing is, is invest in training, really invest in our people. So make sure that we're coaching them, training them uh, so that they understand what we're trying to deliver. And that's been really, really important. Um, and then secondly, is also incentivizing uh you know uh, often staff think oh you've got this this founder or ceo uh you know he's earning huge amounts of money and the reality is i'm not uh and one day hopefully i will but you know and that's not why that's not the the whole essence of why we're doing this you know that this is really a project that wants to go and make a difference um and change the dynamics of, of the, the service of dentistry and 
But what I would say is, is giving people incentives and financial incentives and bonuses is, you know, it brings people together. They have the common purpose. Um, and, uh, and, and, you know, and our, you know, all of our bonuses and incentives aren't just geared around financial targets. They're geared around patient service, patient feedback. Um, and, and that's what's really helped us to try and, to try and get it right because we're growing very fast, very aggressively. Um, and uh, we can't do that if we don't have good quality people on our teams. Absolutely. One, you know, it, it's all got to work together, hasn't it? And I know you're busy because I know that um, my team and particularly Helen, who <laughs> you might as well works for you almost. Well, yeah. she's, very, <laughs> she's very busy with you. That's great to see. And you've currently got, you're up to seven practices. Is that right? Yes, seven practices. So Tooth Club, what we try and do is we don't try and rebrand if we don't need to rebrand um, because there's a, a lot to be said. One of our culture and values is to try and keep things local. So we empower our managers to run their their practices almost as a as a business manager as a practice manager um, rather than trying to micromanage and within that what we do is we listen to feedback so when we do an acquisition we speak to people and we say actually you know is there benefit of rebranding um, and if there is great we will rebrand we love our brand but there's often times where it's not the right move you know it puts people off um, you know to go in and do these major changes um, it, it unsettles staff it unsettles patients so we very much don't always do that so when you look at the Tooth Club website you may only see four practices on there but there's another three uh, in the umbrella that are actually uh, we've kept them isolated to their own uh, own brand because they're good quality brands you know the people that we've bought from the principles we've bought from have done a really good job so why change that when the, when something's working yeah that's good you've, you've answered my next question which was about how you know building the brand um, I mean apart yes. from isolated practices in your group that as you say you've chosen you've made the commercial decision to keep them as they are but let's talk a little bit about you building the actual brand and any advice you can give somebody that is at the beginning of their journey perhaps um, what are the sort of key learnings that you made yeah I mean brainstorm 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 me and my wife had many conversations over uh, during Covid actually uh, you know uh, over our, our kitchen worktop where we were just talking about ideas of kind of names uh, and you know we'd, we've obviously done this before so doing it the second time was almost so much harder because we were trying to make it different um, but there was things that we wanted to keep the same so we went for something that was quite catchy we went for something that was um, very uh, you know didn't didn't associate names to us because you know we want you know our, the practice is more is, is about more than myself right you know I'm one part of the practice it really is about the clinicians and the team on the front line that are delivering the service and and you know Tooth Club you know uh, that came out of the fact that you know we wanted patients to feel part of the family we wanted our team to feel part of the family and be associated with something and that's where Tooth Club came uh, came out it was something we felt people would remember uh, it would stand out um, and then in terms of our brand and colours uh, you know we wanted something that was really young and dynamic um, and it comes from um, my own kind of secret uh, guilty pleasures of watching reality shows dentistry right now uh, an aesthetic demand of dentistry has really been a game changer treatments like Invisalign composite bonding teeth whitening dental implants you know it's a huge market even Botox and fillers and I grew up in Essex so there's a bit of that in my blood um, but you know we really do appeal to that that younger market um, and uh, and we love doing smile transformations it's, it's our biggest passion and I had a market trader once and um, uh, uh, it, it was in Basildon and, uh, you know, he said to me, um, he came in and, uh, you know, he was like, oh, I can't afford dental implants. I said, oh, you know, we, we do finance options and we worked it out for him and he got his implants. And, you know, every week when that guy in his market store got um, stock delivery and got samples in, he'd come in with a massive box of clothes for my wife um, and, uh, and, uh, and give me this massive box of clothes. And, and, I, and I sat down and I said to him, I said, you know, you, you need to stop doing this. You know, you're always giving something so much. And he said to me, he goes, you know what? He goes, I hadn't been able to eat a steak, right, yeah, in eight years. He goes, I was living on soups and soft foods. And, you know, we'd made such a difference to his life. Um, and he was coming and giving me gifts for my wife every week off his stall. And it was just so nice. And, and that's what I mean about really making a difference on someone. Um, and, you know, that this guy really appreciated it. And we do this every single day, uh, you know, doing small transformations. And that kind of comes to the brand and comes to the heart of the business. Uh, and I say to my team, do not treat anyone in this practice like you wouldn't treat your mum. Uh, and, you know, and if we get that right and, uh, you know, we treat people, patients like they're our own family and do right by them, everything else will follow. Good. And, and so follow. far, Touchwood, that ethos, uh, ethos is working. That's cool. Um, 
Now, obviously, along the way, you've doubtless acquired your practices and you've viewed a lot of practices. You've probably kissed a few frogs along the way, as they say. Um, but let's yes. talk about, um, you will have acquired them through various means, but the benefits to you of using a broker um, yes. and helping you, you know, determine the wheat from the chaff. What, what has it done for you using a broker? I know we've been fortunate enough to work with you on several occasions, but overall, yes. what's your sort of message to people out there about going out to secure a site? They're looking and they may feel that it's quite daunting. Lily, I'm going to say a little, something a little bit unconventional. There's brokers and then there's brokers right and there's a real difference and uh, uh between good quality brokers that know what they're doing and those that are just estate agents just mass mass selling practices and and um you know i receive probably at least five new brochures a day on practices that are up for sale and and you know the first thing i look at who's it from and uh you know there'll be some brokers that i look at it and it's it's just mass produced estate agency so you open the you open the you open the, the prospectus and the prospectus will tell you something and uh i don't believe a word of it so i like and the price normally is crazy and overinflated but let's say the price looks right the first thing i will do is go and get the accounts and guess what the accounts normally don't match the prospectus so at that point i don't go any further i don't even i don't even bother it's not worth my time to try and um you know go, 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 dig deep because if the broker hasn't done the work and has has said something on the prospectus that doesn't match the financial accounts you know and we've just seen it too many times but then you've got your good brokers and like lilyhead um who you know when you get a prospectus through you're like you know what this is, you know, you, you, you can guarantee the information is going to be right. It's worth the probing. It's worth the look. Um, you know, one thing that I particularly like, you know, you mentioned Helen. We've also got Asha that's uh, working on a transaction for us right now. But the one thing is that, you know, if they send you a prospectus and you've got a question, you pick up that phone. They're going to know the answer. And, you know, I don't think I've ever picked up the phone to Helen and she didn't actually even know the answer or that she's had to go and uh, go and find out. She knows the practice. She knows what she's selling. And that makes a huge amount of difference because, um, A, because then you can kind of rely on what someone's telling you. You can rely on the pro pro prospectus. There's, you know, there's, you know, what's being put in front of you is, is good quality. And that's, and, and for me, that then means that I'm going to dig deep and I'm going to go and see a practice. And, um, and and that and that's really the the difference. And for me, uh, Helen has been fantastic. Uh, you know my feelings on on Helen very very well. Um, you know because a a journey of buying a practice it is a journey. You know it takes six to nine months. Um, and you know when you go on that journey, there's going to be ups and downs. There's things you find in the due diligence that comes out. And but it's the way that those things are handled because ultimately you want to get to completion. There is no point starting an acquisition journey, spending on legal costs, putting down a deposit, and not getting to the end. So. For me, there's, there's, there's brokers and there's brokers. And, uh, you know, Lilyhead is definitely on one of my, my favourites list. Um, and, you know, and you, you sold me my first. And uh, you sold me my first at Tooth Doctor. You sold me my first at Tooth Club. Um, and, you know, we've, we've got practice number eight, hopefully, uh, fingers crossed, at the end of this month with you guys. Yep. So, fingers crossed. Uh, you know, I, I definitely say the quality of what comes out of Lilyhead is, is, is far superior than a lot. Well, I think it, it goes back to... Thank you very much, first of all. And... and I, yes, I'm very proud of my, all of my team. I've had the pleasure of working with Helen for 30 years. Can you believe that? 30 years. <laughs> oh, she's going to thank you for that because everyone knows her age now. <laughs> I, I know. Um, and it, but what's, it's so important to get correct information because whatever you're sent, whatever you're buying in life, if you start to get duff information, it makes you doubt the credibility of all the information. And as you touched upon, so many practices, the wheels fall off, it crashes and burns because... When you dig into the financial due diligence, it's not accurate. And it's so important to be honest, transparent and, and find out the answers. But if you are uncovering a whole can full of worms, then I can imagine as a buyer, the amount of time, effort and money you waste on looking at dodos yeah. must be extraordinary. Yeah. So well done you for weeding yeah. them out in the first yeah. place and moving no further. Yeah. But sadly, some people <laughs> cling on desperately, hoping that it will come right. But of course, yeah. you know... If they haven't got the right information and if the broker doesn't understand the machinations of the practice, yeah. then you've got no hope. Um, yeah, absolutely. And I and I just, you know, talking about kind of the, 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 the sale kind of journey, what happened, you know, it is a long journey. And you've got so many people involved, you have to get the tax accountant involved. You've got two sets of lawyers. And then if the banks put another set of lawyers in, you've got the surveyor's valuation. Um, you know, there's so many parties to it. And one of the things, and you know, this transaction that Asher and I are hopefully going to complete on in the next few weeks, um, you know, she'll tell you, it's been a very, very long journey. But the, 
the thing that's kept it on course is the fact that Asha has been on top of every single person. And, you know, she'll send me an email saying, hey, what's happening? And I love it because it's a prompt and it's going to get us to that end, to you that end to state. It. And you you have to. And there's just, you know, and if you're not the person that's screaming to get that piece of work done on, on your lawyer's table, right, yeah, it's just going to fall into the background. And, you know, and, and for us now, it is because we've got a few acquisitions going on, you know, our group's growing, you know, my time's limited. And just having that extra support of someone trying to keep that transaction on, on course really makes makes it worthwhile. That's good. Well, I'm very pleased to hear it. And long may it continue. And uh, how many practices yes. do you want to end up owning then in the Tooth Club stable? It's a really, really, really good question. So my answer to this is always, I want less, but I want quality. Uh, you know, so the, the, the goal is, uh, you know, the goal is always to get to 10 practices by Christmas. I think realistically, we're going to get to nine. Um, and I don't think we're going to make the 10th one this year. And that's OK, because I want I, I want nine good quality practices come December rather than 10 half baked yeah, practices no, and for me for me it's about making sure that every practice delivers what we say we're going to, we're going to deliver some of the acquisitions that we've done have had a few rocky roads along the way so it just takes us a, that little bit more time so my focus is really about doing doing quality so we'll get to nine this year uh, the goal is probably at least five five next year um you know in terms of fi funding and financing you know it, you know the challenges have changed because post covid um but we've we, you know we've got a few things that are going to help us help us through those challenges so definitely you know we'll definitely be at 15 next year by by december next year um and as long as they're good quality practices delivering the patient care delivering the culture and values that we've set out to do we will continue to grow um however if we don't get those 15 100 percent right across the board you know we will slow our slow our journey down so you know whenever we buy a trans buy a practice you know there is an element of you know this it isn't all financial you know you are taking on something that someone's built um you know one practice that we're buying at the moment you know the guy spent you know 15 years building up a practice it is his baby and you know yes there's a financial element but he is then trusting his staff all the nurses, all the people that he's trained up and have been loyal to him over to us. And we have to repay that loyalty and we have to repay that loyalty by integrating that practice well, continuing to, to, to grow it um, and bringing people on that on that journey so they feel re re rewarded, empowered um, and uh, continue to kind of you know have good careers with us. So that's why it's really important for me that whatever we do, we do it right. We do it to good, good level of quality, because I also believe let's talk financials, because there is an element of this, which is a business and its financials. I also feel my nine practices will deliver a great quality EBITDA if we do them well. And there is so much growth potential within those nine practices that we can continue to evolve. Um, so everything we do, we want to do, we want to do really well. Yeah, that's good to hear. And it's, and it's not, and we are not a corporate that goes and adds multiple practices, just to add, add, add tons of EBITDA that's going to uh, kind of sell after five years just to kind of multiply that EBITDA. That's not our game. That's not our strategy. It's all about good quality. Less, but do it well. Our profile mix has typically been to be more on the, on the private side. Uh, the patient journey we're trying to deliver tends to work more with uh, more well with on the on the private side, and our our profitability and being able to you know give patients the time and care they need tends to work better uh, on private on private. However, we do have some small NHS contracts as well that we service, and and they work well and are a good opportunity for us as well. You know to um, be able to show patients the other side of treatments that we can offer that aren't strictly on the NHS so things like Invisalign so uh, private for us has worked really well we do a lot of marketing um, and actually I kind of fell into it by accident watching a few YouTube videos I learned how social media marketing works um, but also I always try and see our patient journey as being the patient so if someone's visiting our, our website does it make sense is it clear um, you know does it give the patient the information they want the same with the social media side we do a lot on social media so we're you know on Instagram on Facebook um, and the posts we do are really relatable and that is what has been kind of our way of growing uh, private private revenue and a lot of the acquisitions that we do you know uh, are 
buy and build practices. So they're practices that have huge growth potential um, where we can add some social media, we can add kind of the Invisalign, the implants, the Botox and fillers and, and grow those practices and grow the, the, the EBITDA on those practices. And that's where we really uh, tend to go. And the NHS, I find, gives us a smaller opportunity to do that. Hence why we tend to go more for more private, private high street practices. Yeah, absolutely. Now you talked about buy and build, but what about, yes. you know, straight squats from zero? Yes. Oh, we What's love your squats. Experience? <laughs> I know. Yes, we've done um, it. We've done a few squats now. Every time so we three get a squat in, in, everybody in the team shouts, "Send it to Kuna!" <laughs> yeah. Yes, absolutely. Oh, I love a squat. Three. Uh, so we've done three squats so far, uh, and I, and I love it. You know, a squat is an opportunity to start afresh. And don't get me wrong, there are lots of downsides of a squat, and there are lots of downsides of a buy and build, and vice versa. Uh, but the good sides of a of a squat is you can design it how you want. You know, you can choose the paint colours, you can choose the chairs. We've got a really fantastic team now of. Uh, builders and uh, contractors and everyone kind of knows what they want to do but what it allows us to do is really put our brand and put our stamp on it uh, you know we hire a team and we do a ton of training um, to make sure uh, you know there's no bad habits in there and that's 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 what works well the downside is is bringing the patients in so you need a lot of cash flow uh, and I, anyone that's doing a squat make sure you have money in the bank to turn over the bills for at least the first six to nine months um, and make sure they're in a good good location and you know good Good location doesn't always mean affluent areas. You know, when I uh, one of my practices, Booper said to me, "Oh, we're not going to buy that practice because it's um, not in an affluent area." Uh, guess what? That practice was turning over close to two million, uh, not in an affluent area, but it was in the right location on a high street um, and had great footfall. So, you know, so I would um, I would say that. Uh, you know, squats are great. Um, but equally, you know, where I see uh, if I get the opportunity um, and I see small practices in a good location, um, I would I, I'd buy them if they're small and they've got growth opportunity. We will go and buy them. So our portfolio is is definitely mixed. Um, the squats appeal to me because I feel like I can really put my stamp on them and start afresh. And um, but yeah, it, it, I think if you're going to if you're going to build a group, I think it's nice to kind of have have a mix of both. If you're going to do just one practice, you know, if you've got the cash flow, you know, to, to slowly build up a squat and you're being patient, um, I think squats are a good opportunity for people for an individual principal. It's about having that confidence, isn't it? And absolutely understanding mm. your business. Because if you don't, yes. you're going to be um, coming a cropper, frankly. A and, and a cash absolutely. flow. Absolutely. Yeah, because there's absolutely. so many and, facets and to building the decline based marketing. Everything takes time and money, and you've got to get it done yes. right. And the team. Absolutely. And um, if yes. you get it right, it's good. But it's not for the faint hearted. I think you have to be very confident. You're obviously now in a really yeah. strong position. You, you've got the team around yeah. you as well as your support yeah. team for your design, yes. the installation, and everything, which is great. Um, yeah. But no, that's very good advice. Yeah. Kunel, yes. it's been an absolute pleasure chatting to you today. And I'm going to call you this time next year to talk again on a podcast to find out how the Tooth Club, the, the brand is going, and how many practices you Excellent. have. Um, it's been very illuminating also to hear and I love your vision and your passion and I truly wish you the very best of luck so thank you for your Thanks, time Thanks, Lily and, Thank uh, you for having luck. me fingers, fingers crossed for our completion on your 8th is it at the end of the month Yes and yes, um, thank we you. look forward to helping you very much more in the future and thank you all for listening to this podcast remember of course that you can download any of the Dental Business Transaction podcasts and they're available on all the usual media, Apple, iTunes, Spotify, Podbean. And also, please like and subscribe, not only these, but our YouTube channel as well. Thanks very much. See you soon. <laughs>